Libyan Coast Guards are hunting down Sicilian fishermen on prime fishing grounds, where the red shrimp are waiting to be caught. There is a particularly large number of them off the coast of Libya. But there, Libyans block Italian fishermen from accessing the fishing spots, a political power play. Sicilian fishermen are repeatedly arrested and detained in Libya. I no longer have a sense of the future when I look towards the sea. I am afraid that my husband will not return. An afternoon in Mazzara del Vallo. Coastal fishermen are hauling in their daily catch. These are the few who won't risk venturing further out into the open sea. Local fishmongers are already waiting. They appreciate the fresh catch here in western Sicily, even though they are paying prices that are no longer profitable for most fishermen. The only people still making real money are deep-sea fishermen. Their crews are at sea for up to two months. They fish primarily for red shrimp, which are sold at a profit all over the world. The shellfish are sorted by size and then stored in deep freeze while they are still at sea. Captain Filippo Adamo is particularly proud of this catch. These are the famous first-class red shrimp. They don't get any bigger than this. This Mediterranean delicacy is in high demand at the finest restaurants around the world. When times are good, we can make 550 euros with first-class red shrimp for a 12-kilo box. That's 45 euros per kilo, here on board. Up to 100,000 euros can be made from a good catch. In return, the crew risks a lot. Fishing grounds for red shrimp off the Libyan coast are particularly lucrative. And they're actually international waters. But the Libyans have been claiming them as their own for years. But incidents keep happening, like this one, during the summer of 2018. The Libyan Coast Guard wanted to stop the Italian fishermen and arrest the crew. Now Marco Marona's crew has been caught. In early September, his two fishing trawlers were detained by the Libyans. The vessel's owner is desperate. 18 men have been detained in a Benghazi prison for months. No dispute with the Libyans has ever lasted this long. So how can it just be about sovereign rights? It's horrible not being able to see the ships anymore, or the men who work for me. It's like having a missing son who you can't hug anymore. A total of nine Italian fishing trawlers are involved in this clash with the Libyans. Unlike some of the other captains, Giuseppe Giacolone was able to save his ship, barely. The Libyans approached us. They wanted to capture all of the trawlers' captains, along with their paperwork. We risked our lives when we escaped, because the Coast Guard is armed. They could have shot us. This is a photo of the fishermen taken into custody. It appears to have been taken after they were arrested in Benghazi. Not on the photo, Mohammed Ben Hadada. Mohammed is one of the six Tunisian crew members held by the Libyans. Since he has been arrested by the Libyans twice before, his family has already feared for his life both times. But this time, uncertainty is wearing on the nerves of both his daughter Nauris and mother Monia. We were always in contact and knew how he was doing. His phone always worked. This time, we haven't heard from him in months. We don't know what's happening or if he's even still alive. I feel really exhausted. I no longer have a sense of the future when I look towards the sea. I am afraid that my husband will not return. As difficult as it is in Libya, 
I just hope that he is in a safe place. At the port of Matsara, Mohammed's daughter meets with the families of other detained fishermen as much as she can. Together with the ship's owner, Marco, they hold a small protest to comfort one another. Cristina Amabilino worries about her husband, Salvo, the first officer on one of the fishing trawlers. Our children are waiting for their fathers, mothers for their sons and wives for their husbands. The government must act swiftly. We are fighting for 18 Italian fishermen, which includes six Tunisians, two Senegalese and two Indonesians, who have all lived here in Mazara del Vallo for many years, some since before I was born. We are talking about 18 fishermen from Mazara del Vallo who pay their taxes and who have families here. But the families still refuse to give up, and they're taking their cause to the capital, Rome. They have been staging a protest in front of Parliament for two months, demanding more action from the Italian government and more protection for fishermen off the coast of Libya. We risk getting arrested 74 nautical miles off the coast because Libya considers the open sea to be sovereign waters. Europe and Italy must step in to stop this, because the sea does not belong to just one person or nation. It belongs to all of us. We never expected that my husband would leave home for work, set sail, and then end up in a Libyan prison. In Mazzara del Vallo, Paolo Giacolone also understands what this means. The red shrimp trader owns two fishing trawlers. In 2009, his vessels were also seized by the Libyans. When you're in charge of two fishing trawlers, each with a crew of seven, men you've worked with for 25 or 30 years. An arrest like that really gets under your skin. Just thinking about it today makes me feel awful. The incident off the coast of Tripoli lasted for three days before the men were released. Italy's then head of government, Silvio Berlusconi, negotiated directly with the late Libyan strongman, Muammar Gaddafi. Gaddafi claimed 74 nautical miles of open sea as his own personal territory. That's like my neighbor breaking through the wall and saying that my house belongs to him. Libya has created an international problem in the Mediterranean, which no Italian government has ever tackled. At least the Italian Navy used to patrol international waters off the Libyan coast until 2018. They also flew in by helicopter to assist Italian fishermen when they were being harassed by Libyans. Most of the time, their speedboats then turned around and left the Sicilians to continue fishing in the waters. And then came the turning point. Two years ago, Rome withdrew from the southern Mediterranean. The only thing the fishermen were told, the operation is too costly and politically complicated. From that point on, they fish at their own risk. The reasoning behind it? If the Navy withdraws, it won't be able to rescue distressed migrants at sea either. More and more people were attempting to reach Europe by crossing the Mediterranean Sea. There is still a dispute between European countries over their rescue and admittance. Not only is the right-wing populist government in Rome abandoning the refugees, it is also compromising the security of its own fishing fleet. But we need their protection so that we can fish in international waters. Otherwise, what happened to my ship's crews will just happen again next time. Claudio Bertolotti, a security expert on the southern Mediterranean, sees fishermen as pawns in the Libyan power struggle. This is a real kidnapping that is threatening Italian fishermen and their lives. This is an international power play that goes far beyond territorial waters or fishing grounds, and who has access to them in the southern Mediterranean. 
This photo proves Bertolotti's point. The arrested fishermen were forced to pose in front of a photo of General Khalifa Haftar. The long-standing instigator of Libya's civil war still controls Benghazi. But because he has fewer and fewer allies, he has been excluded from recent peace negotiations that would affect the entire country. This kidnapping could be a last-ditch effort by the Libyan general. His back's against the wall, and he's trying to get himself back in the game once again with a dramatic stunt. So Paolo Giacolone is convinced that it's not just about red shrimp. And yet properly marketed, the crustacean could deliver peace on both sides of the Mediterranean. As long as the Libyans can be convinced that a real deal can be made with the Italians. The fight for fishing grounds over red shrimp could finally come to an end if both sides can profit from the sale of this culinary delicacy. The quality here has been given to us by God, with a sea that gives us delicacies that are valued around the world. This sea could feed Italians and Libyans, just as it feeds these shrimps. Paolo Giacolone dreams of a joint venture where shrimp can also be packed in Libya, which could shorten the long transport routes in the Mediterranean. Everyone would benefit. We could finally fish in peace without fearing for our lives. And the Libyans would have us, the Italians, as new investors. We could build warehouses on their coasts and create new jobs. But in order for this to happen, peace must first prevail across the sea in Libya. And the fishermen of Mazzara would need assurance of free passage. This way we can avoid more arrests and stop more families from suffering. Despite the explosive situation, nobody here in Mazzara del Vallo can imagine life without red shrimp.